Hey y'all, it's Laura, and I'm back with a Bella Boulevard layout. This time we are diving into the Fireworks and Freedom collection for these super cute photos. Now these are some older photos. They're roughly 2018, I believe, of my twins on the 4th of July, and I thought they would be perfect to use with this absolutely beautiful red, white, and blue themed collection. Now we are gonna be doing a nine by 12 layout, and I've decided to go ahead and start with this beautiful red paper that is in the Fireworks and Freedom paper pack and it is going to be the border around our layout and I think it adds a really nice pop and beautiful saturation of color to the layout. Now this is a super quick layout. I put it together in roughly 30 minutes or so and mostly because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I had these really cute two by two photos and I wanted to create a bit of a photo strip down one side and then just focal image that beautiful four by four square photo on the other side. So I'm creating two columns one small thin photo strip, one larger column to the left. So for my photo strip, I have a pretty nice two and a half inch wide strip of striped paper backed with some Bella Besties in that beautiful blueberry. It's absolutely gorgeous. And so that's gonna be the foundation for my photo strip. And so once I get everything in place, we're gonna go ahead and add this border by creating a perimeter with tape around the back of my white cardstock. This is a great way to get the most out of your paper gutting the borders in the backgrounds. If it's not a paper that you absolutely love, you certainly don't have to gut it. You can go ahead and get it used up and hide the bits you're not that excited about uh, behind some white cardstock. It's still getting used and not getting wasted or thrown away. But if it is a paper that you love, and I am a sucker for a good shade of red, I want to gut that inside bit so that I can use it for another layout just stretching your paper a little further. So now here is my photo strip. I'm gonna tuck it right over here on the right side. And I did debate whether or not I wanted some white showing, but in the end decided not to go with that. So I'm gonna set up my three two by two photos that have a small white border on them with some white cardstock here. And then I have two two by two and a quarter, and a two and a quarter by two and a quarter squares that are going to fit in between them. There we go. So that is our photo strip. Got ahead and taped that down and then I'm gonna add some embellishments into those squares. Now, if you were recreating this layout and you wanted to add some journaling, you could certainly do that. If you wanted to do a smaller title in one of those squares, you certainly could do that as well. I didn't really have a lot of journaling to add to this particular layout, which is unusual, but with all of the photos, it's pretty descriptive of what's going on. I didn't really feel like I needed to add to it. It's just a really fun little layout. And I definitely wanted to use the Chow Chips, which is the chipboard uh, for this collection, because there is a really cute large titles on this chipboard. And I'm a big fan of a large title. So we're going to start with the parade, and then I've grabbed that little star chipboard piece to put underneath of it. And at this point, I had thought to put my photo at the top of the page. But as I went along, I was playing with the beautiful Aria Alphas, and so I got them in red and in the light blue. And while I was playing with those, I decided to change up the title and make that the second half, make the parade the second half of the title. And then I'm gonna use the light blue and the red to spell out twins on parade. And I thought that was quite cute. Uh, but while I was doing that, when I was setting this up, I kept looking at it and thinking, you know, I think I'd like this title better at the top. And I just kept thinking on it and just kept thinking on it and finally just decided, you know what, we're going to swap them. So you'll see in a few minutes, I will swap the two, move the title up to the top and then the, the larger photo down to the bottom, which isn't something I normally do. I do tend to put my photos toward the top of the page. So it was just a, something a bit different, something to try. And I actually really liked how it looked. I also think it adds a little bit more balance to the page and doesn't draw quite as much attention away from the photo strip to the side. Because as it stands, you see that larger photo first and it draws all of your attention first. And while I love my photos to have all of the attention, I wanna make sure that all of the photos got some attention. And so by moving the title up to the top, I was able to move the larger photo to the bottom and it kind of balances out the attention for each of the photos on the page. Now I did get smart this time, pull in my beautiful T-square ruler to line up these alphas as neatly as possible. And I really like the way these work because these alphas are kind of wonky on purpose. And so if they're not perfectly straight, 
it's okay. You really can't tell. And I like the kind of soft, uh, rounded look to them. They, I'm really a big fan of these Aria Alphas. I really like those. And paired with this very angular parade, I think it's just a really fun, whimsical look for the title, and it just turned out exactly as I expected. Now, one of the reasons that I have this sort of bouncing baseline to my parade was simply to make it fit. Because the word parade is so large, it didn't quite fit in that white spot, that, that long white column there on the left side. And so I had to get creative with how I was going to set it up to make it fit on the page. And this sort of bouncing baseline kind of puzzles the letters together and made it fit. There we go. So now we've got our photo on the bottom. And I think this looks so much better. I think it balances out the layout a lot better. And I decided, you know what? Let's dive right into the embellishing. So now that I've got my title, I've got my photos in place, and I've got my two white cardstock spots that I'm going to fill in with embellishments. I decided that I wanted to layer up the banner underneath of my title. So I went to the cut apart sheet and I really just wanted this blue. I didn't really care what it said on the blue because that was going to be covered up. The words were mostly going to be covered up. I just liked this light blue and thought it would be nice to have a pop of it underneath of the title to tie in the little bit of blue in the title at the top and the little bit of blue in the stripe. So just bringing that blue to one more place on the page. Quite often, if there is a bright color like that, I will try to get it in three different places on the page, and that way it just feels more cohesive as a design. So now there are two packs of ephemera in this collection. One is icons and one is words. And I'm just going to have a little play. I just kind of tried a few different things. Any of these would have worked just fine. But I was trying to use, I ended up trying to use up some of the food icons. Even though there's no food actually happening in these photos, I thought it fit on a bright sunny summer day. And with the heat that just exists in the south, we have had the worst summer, y'all. It has been insane. It has been 90s and hundreds for a month. All through June, it was up in the hundreds, which is wild. It is not usually quite that hot down here that early in the summer. Later in the summer, sure. Late July, early August, absolutely. It is just heat, but June, June! That was wild. It was a lot. And so we have had a lot of indoor time <laughs> this summer. Not much outdoor time, unfortunately, for my twins, who absolutely love being outside. But we are, we are existing. It's still in the hundreds pretty heavily uh, now that we're in July as well. So it's just been a really boiling summer. Now, I am just kind of pulling in bits and pieces here, auditioning different embellishments to see what I like. I really liked this little born free kind of uh, book plate, and I kind of stuck that at the bottom of my photo, and that's all I really did to it. Uh, that's very under embellished for me, but the colors on this layout are so bold, and they're so bright, and having four photos on a 9 by 12 I didn't want to overwhelm it by adding a ton of embellishments. So I'm going to keep my embellishing fairly simple, and most of it's going to be concentrated in those two little white squares. By compartmentalizing my embellishments into those squares, they don't overtake the page or overwhelm the photos, and that was definitely my intention. So just playing around with a few different pieces, I end up going with two hearts and a little banner piece on that top square. On the bottom square, I'll end up bringing in a few other bits and pieces. I tried several things. Uh, there was a couple of pieces that spelled July, 4th of July, and I tried to fit them across the square. That did not fit. <laughs> that didn't work unfortunately, but uh, I did give it a go, and I think that's worth a try. I think I tried to do July 4th as well, and it just looked a bit strange, so I ended up pulling all of those off. On the small photos themselves, I'm just going to add a little word phrase strip. That was it. Keep it really simple. Make sure I didn't cover up too much that's in the photos. Just keeping it very, very simple embellishing on this one. Now, before I forget, we do have a blog post accompanying this beautiful layout, and that is on Bella Boulevard on TypePad. 
and I'll put the link for it in the description box below so you can go check it out. Uh, you can get the Fireworks and Freedom collection at most of your online scrappy stores and a few of your local places as well, but it is just a really fun collection. And I have to tell you, any collection that includes this gorgeous red, this beautiful, cool-toned red, and navy are automatically going to be one of my favorites. So I really enjoyed playing this with this one and the icons are just super cute. As you can see on that second square, I ended up with a cupcake and a little slice of watermelon. My girls are huge fans of watermelon. They eat the tar. <laughs> of watermelon and cantaloupe every single summer. So when I saw that little watermelon slice, I was like, yes, that needs to go on here as well. Perfect for my sweet little girls. Now, I did want to bring in some puffy stickers. I wanted to bring in some things other than just the chipboard to add a little bit more texture on the page. But again, there just wasn't a lot of space left to add embellishments. I thought I was going to bring in maybe some of this blue in this puffy sticker, gave that a go, popped it onto the page, and then went looking for a red one to put on the other side to balance out my title and couldn't find one. I'm sure I have red somewhere, could not find one. And so I ended up finding this little flat sticker instead and grabbed the blue version in navy to swap out. There we go. Same effect. Really like how that came out. I really like the shape of the heart stickers from the alpha sets. I don't know why. They're just a really fun shape of heart. Finishing it off with some Nuvo drops, this time in a glittery gold. But I skipped the splatters on this one because there really wasn't a lot of white space to fill in. I tend to use splatters as a finishing touch that helps to separate, break the separation between the open white space and the embellishments and my clusters. However, in this particular layout, there really wasn't a lot of white space anyway, and the clusters go right to the edge of the page. So I really didn't need to do that and chose not to. Am I hoarding my last bottle of Heidi Swap Color Shine in hopes that the new one will come out soon? Yes, yes I am. I am absolutely hoarding it. So that's where we stand. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, bye, y'all.